Well, hey, everybody. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I hope those of you that needed to file your taxes got it done yesterday, or if you filed an extension, got it postmarked yesterday, you know, hope that worked out real well. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hi, I'm Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our Situation Room. This is a virtual stitching retreat, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Central. And it's great to see everybody here, over 300 already. You guys go ahead, now that you're in here, wander over to the virtual kitchen. There's some goodies in there, and there's a thumbs up button on your way in. So if you'd be so kind as to tap that, I would appreciate it very much. Helps the channel more than you know, doesn't cost a thing. Subscribe too, because you never know what you're going to listen to or find out or, you know, roll your eyes at in here. <laughs> we always have a lot of laughter and a lot of fun. And if you are brand new uh, or it might be your first time catching the chat live, pop in in the chat and let us know. There's a welcoming committee milling around in the back. So they will be happy to make you feel right at home. Uh, don't feel like you don't know anybody because these people could rock by each other in a quilt store and never know that that is who they were chatting with. So thumbs up on every video. Yay. Brenda's got her coffee. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, good morning, Elle Faber. She says Wisconsin is in the house. So from Texas to Wisconsin, and I'm sure both coasts are represented and everywhere in between all my flyover country friends. Nice, nice. Uh, so yesterday I did some more stitching on the chicken that I messed up on and I finished her. There she is, right? That one right there, right? Yeah, it was the green one. This one right here. So she's done. So there's 10 chickens out of the 16. We're moving along on that, huh? Uh, oh my goodness. Oregon. Yay. Hi, D craft. Thanks for joining us. Love it. Love it. Love it. So I could, I could do that, but, uh, Valerie, my sidekick on Sundays, and this Sunday is going to be our giveaway Sunday. So be sure to tune in for that. That's at 4 p.m. Central early enough that it's not in the way for supper for most of y'all. Um, so, oh my goodness. I love it. You guys are so fun. Um, so I've got uh, something very cool to give away from Connecting Threads. They sent me something cool to give to you. So be sure to do that. It's completely free. It's right here on the YouTube channel. You do need to be a subscriber. That helps. And um, then we'll just do a freebie giveaway. Maybe two. We'll see. I'll put a blog post out about it, but it's right here. You're in the right place right now on Power Tools with Thread. Okay. Did I finish my American Pie quilt? No. So I was getting to that. Right. I've got to get the binding on it. So it's quilted. It's just not, it doesn't have the binding on. So that's what I was going to put together today. My sweet sidekick, Valerie, she lives half of her life in her house and the other half of her life at Fiberworks Fabric Studio in McQueenie, Texas. <laughs> so I texted her yesterday morning and I said, if you're at Fiberworks today, would you pick me up three quarters of a yard of uh, the red with the white dot for the binding? Because the choice for the binding from the uh, designer was the gray, like a grayish, same color as the backing. It's right here. It's on the long arm, that gray. And I didn't want to do that. I It just, it was not inspirational to me. So you guys helped me pick out the red, right? So she uh, brought me the red. Oh my goodness, Kathleen. Thank you so much for your super sticker. Monthly budget for traffic training. Terrific training. <laughs> traffic training. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. That helps so much. You have no idea. Um, you know, every little bit is just so nice because uh, you never know what you're going to learn here, you know, on power tools. You never know. <laughs> What's the difference between the clear blue tiles and target stick paper. Billy Lou, that's a great question. That's a great question. I have a video out on how to use those clear blue tiles. So if you do a YouTube search for clear blue tiles, it'll tell you exactly how those work. And they're just a visual placement guide for end-to-end -end quilting. Whereas print and stick target paper 
is designed for you to just, um, let me do this. That's designed just to give you a zero center on any given embroidery design that you want to do. There's Frito. She wandered in this morning. Hi, baby girl. And um, she's so good. She's loving her new box. There she is. Hi, baby. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. Do you want a little treat? You want a little treat? Yeah. You're a good girl. Don't, don't chew with your mouth open. <laughs> so, um, what, what the clear blue tiles do, and I love using clear blue tiles on little projects, but what they do is you can lay them out all over a project and make marks. So you're going to mark center and then your sides. And then you just, once you get done with that one, then you move it over and you line up the side marks and mark center and line up the side marks and mark. And it works great for, um, so when you sewed out a template for your edge to edge, is that considered a clear blue tile? No, no, no. If you hold on one second, I'll go get them and show you. Um, yeah, hold on a second. I'll get them. I've got both the regular set and the expansion set number one. I don't, they have a new one out, expansion set number two. But I don't have that one and I don't know if I'm going to get it. Puppy love for Frito. Thank you, Bernadette. You're so thoughtful. Okay. So these are Kimber Bell's clear blue tiles. They, you can't run these for your, through your printer for one. So print and stick target paper. That's great. If you've got a design and uh, you just want to make sure wherever you want to put it, you know, a lot of times, like if I'm going to embroider on a shirt, I like the print and stick target paper because I can cut around the design and it's got the crosshair on it, slap it on there. And then I know in the embroidery machine that that crosshair is going to give me that zero center and the alignment will be right. I can fix it in the machine. Okay. So that's prim primarily what that is for. I do like them. Uh, I used print and stick for the letters on the happy Halloween block. This uh, right here. So I printed out. Okay. This was done in three hoopings. <clears throat> It was actually done in seven hoopings. So one hooping, you can see, see where the line is for the stabilizer. Okay, there were four passes through the hoop for the background quilting. So I took the background quilting, the six by 10, and I resized the six by 10 and I was stitching in the hoop for the luminaire, which is 10 and a half by 16, 10 by 16. Yeah, a little over 10. So I resized it down to 97% because I wanted it just a hair smaller. And I explained all of that in the video of how I did this. So one hooping was this half of the background quilting and, and this half. Just this one fourth. So here's one six by 10 and here's one six by 10. And I put them together and then I just stitched that piece. And then I did it again and again and again until I had all, all four hoopings. Okay. So the background quilting will fit in the finished 12 by 41 block. Okay. And I'm glad it's 41 because it gave me just that little bit of gap between, I had to play with it, but it worked out. Okay. So then the print and stick target paper came in. I could have used print and stick on this, but I didn't because it was larger than an eight and a half by 11. And so I just printed it on regular paper. It came out in two sheets and I taped those two sheets together and trimmed them. And then I figured out on the table 
where all four were going to be. That that piece happened. Then the print and stick target paper, one was happy. That was a hooping. Okay. Hallow was another hooping. And then Ween was a third hooping. And the print and stick is great for that because you can stick all your words and letters down and you can eyeball it, you know, and look at it and see if it works and it's going to, it's going to flow right. And then I take it over to, you know, I get it all hooped and I just left all that print and stick on the fabric where it was. And it held that stuff really handles the manhandling of rehooping and rehooping. So it's a wonderful product. It really is. Now, what clear blue tiles would do is I have, I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to show you. So what clear blue tiles will do is give you a visual. Let me see. Let me pull one out here. So this is the eight by eight block. So I could set it right here. Let me see if I have another one that's small enough to play with. Yeah. And here's a four, whatever. Oh, here's a six by 10. Okay. So here's a six by 10. Okay. So if I wanted to do clear blue tiles, and there is a six by 10 design in the Juju thing, right? In the background quilting by Juju for this, this quilt. I would put this right here and I would take my little marker and I would mark the, it's got these little, see those little marks? So I'd put this here and I mark center and give myself the crosshairs. And you have to mark your little hash marks all around the sides. Then I take it from here. Let's say here's the hash mark. Then I put it over here and line it up. And here's the hash mark again. So there's a hooping and there's a hooping. Okay. That's how you would do that. That's what clear blue tiles are. All they are is a visual representation of how things can fit all over your quilt. And you use... Don't, I don't recommend that blue uh, water soluble marker. I prefer the, um, I prefer the iron away markers, the friction markers. So anyway, yeah, they don't really, Linda, that's exactly right. I, I prefer the friction markers, not the pens. Okay. Friction markers. These are in my Amazon store, but, and they've got, here's one with a fine point. And then they have some that are not so fine, but the fine points are nice because on the clear blue tile, let me see here. There's a little window right there and you just write in, like I would write six by 10 and that's for you to write, it says size. And that's for you to write size right there on your fabric. So you know that a six by 10 design goes in you know, because this doesn't stay, you take all this off and now you're left with a piece of fabric with marks all over it. But you know, your six by 10 design goes in here. I do like them. I think they're great. I like them for small projects. Um, you know, something I don't want to throw on the long arm. That, that works out just fine. They're pretty easy. Yeah, go get you some friction, not friction pens, markers, Bernadette, markers. They're, they're made by the same company but the pens tend to ghost. So, okay. All right. And then there is an expansion set. There's no designs in here, but there's larger tiles for the ginormous hoops. But the seed, the USB that comes in the original set has those larger sizes of designs on it. So, yeah. Was Betsy, was that your baby quilt that you put on? Did you put that on Facebook? Yeah, Kimber Bell has a real good video. I think mine's better. Don't tell her. She did a baby. Kim Christofferson did a baby quilt on hers. 
I just did, uh, I think I did a Lori Holt pillow on mine. Yeah, that was yours, Betsy. I thought so. So they're not, they're an investment. They're not inexpensive, but they're really good. Uh, especially if you don't have one of those fancy machines that has background quilting in it already. And like on my Luminaire, the only design that it does on a single pass is the stipple. If you want any of those other pretty quilting designs, it does double pass on them. And I'm, I'm like, why would you do that? I don't know. But I, I like them. I think they're great. So. I'm, yeah, I mean, because sometimes you just sit there and you're scratching your head going, what am I going to quilt this with, you know? And then on the clear blue tiles, it, it comes with, um, let me show you. It comes with a USB. It comes with a couple of slap bands. It comes with a blue pen, water, water soluble that I don't recommend. Let me see if that's got a picture. These are all the tiles that come in this starter set so you get a whole bunch of them and it has a usb and i wanted to show you you get all of these designs so those come in all of the sizes that fit in every one of those clear blue tiles so we have winter it looks like a bunch of snowflakes Okay. And spring and swirls and fall with some candy corn. Summer has some bumblebees. There's some loops. We've got some border blocks. That, that's nice. And it has border swirls. And then it has what are called bitty blocks. And those are little two inch designs that go in cornerstones. So that's right. Th that's exactly right. Kim's channel there. Those designs are all the same scale. So no matter which size of clear blue tile you're using, you can just Tetris those together on your background fabric. However they will fit, it doesn't matter which tile you use and they all work together and they are designed and digitized so that they almost look like they nest. They're great. They really are. Yeah, you'll love them. They're wonderful for background quilting. So Star uses the designs by Juju end to end. Yeah, you know, whatever works. The end to end is really good uh, on um, larger quilts where you wanna get more done at one time. You know, you can have a small thing and run nine different hoopings on it, depending on how you're making everything fit. But on, yeah, well, Tetris explains exactly, Erin, what that, she says, I love Tetris, so funny. Tetris explains exactly what those clear blue tiles are. You're just putting those tiles wherever they'll fit, right? And you only have one of each size, so you have to make your marks and then move it and make your marks and move it and figure out where it's going to go. So, anyway. Um, okay. That looks good. All right. Uh, I was going to make some binding today and do we have any binding newbies? Binding can be a challenge, especially when you've got fabric that is a solid. So I don't recommend doing binding on a solid. It looks like my land of enchantments falling off the wall. Oh yeah. Well, they're pinned. Uh, I, this one's not pinned. That one's pinned. I keep walking by it. <laughs> There's got to be, oh, here's that other block. This thing is going to get all arranged on Sunday because Valerie told me she's coming over. And we're going to, I'm going to have it. I'm going to start putting it together. So you never have done binding, Cindy? Awesome. Well, Put your seatbelt on. We're fixing to do this. Um, yeah, so that'll get all done on Sunday. It was so funny because I Valerie said, um, so she was at Fiberworks when I called her or texted her. And she said, okay. Um, <laughs> 
Bind, binding, I like binding. I don't mind it. Um, it's just a matter of getting the flip in your head. That's all. So um, anyway, so I, I texted her and then she called me and she said, hey, they've got seven eights. Uh, I'll tell you in a second, Peggy, why using a solid is more challenging. Um, they got a seven eights that's already pre-cut on the bolt. Do you want that? I said, sure, because it would be wrong to cut three quarters and not take the rest, right? That would be wrong. So I had to get the whole seven eights. So that was fine. And then um, she texted me later on. It was like 3.30 or so. And she said, I'm leaving for home. And I said, okay. So I was in the middle of shooting a video for Mr. Pumpkinhead. I'm going to show y'all him in a minute. And um, so I finished the scan and cut part of him. I got out maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes later after she texted me. And she was coming this way and I was coming that way. And she made the turn and I made the turn right behind her. <laughs> we could not have done that again, she said. <laughs> so... That's right. Kay says no fabric left behind. That's not a nice thing. So yeah, I thought hubby was going to extend my design wall too. Our, um, I don't know how to say CR hat. I don't know how to say that. I told him what I wanted and he said it's on the list. You know how that goes. I Connie, I prefer um, a two and a half inch binding because I I finished the binding by machine. So oh D Britzina. Yeah, the mats for the CM machines and the DX machines are not compatible. They don't interchange with the older machines. You might be stuck with it. Unless you want to sell it. <laughs> Kim, she says she hopes Keith completes his list faster than she does. Hers does. Okay. So why is stitching on a solid more challenging than not? Okay. So always, you know, just, just like when you're quilt piecing, right sides together. Okay. So here's my one piece. This is not on the bias. This is a straight cut because I've got a straight quilt. If I had a scalloped edge, I would cut on the bias, but I don't. So the, the trick is here, I don't get all wound up, wound up, even with stripes. I don't try to match them up and get all crazy because this, the edge that is seen is so minuscule, you'll make yourself, it, there's no benefit in doing that. I need a pair of glasses. I'll get my blue ones to go with my blue shirt. How's that? All right. So right sides together at a 90 degree angle. Okay. And I don't measure. Let me get in here. I don't measure. I just, wrong way. There we go. And look at my scissors. Okay. I just make sure I have a little color off the end over here and a little color off the end over there. So I don't end up with a white stripe somewhere I don't want. And then I always stitch. Where did my pen go? I always stitch and I do it the same way every time. You can do it whatever way, but make it consistent. Just get in the habit of making it consistent. I always stitch from this V corner right here down to this V corner right here. I always stitch from upper left to lower right, no matter what, when I bind. And that just makes life a little bit easier. And I don't mark it because I have diagonal seam tape from Cluck Cluck Sew on my machine. And so the diagonal seam tape has this is a trick. You guys, my dad used to say that. Let me show you a trick. So you've got a black line, a red line, and a black line. The red line is on center with the needle. And so these are a quarter inch away. I don't really pay much attention to those because I've got quarter inch markings on the 
on the plate. But what I do is I line up the top left right under the needle. Okay. And then I line up that V, the bottom V, with the red right there. Okay. See that? And so I, when I sew, I make sure I'm looking at, the, I'm not looking at the needle. It has a job and it knows what it's doing. I'm looking here to make sure that this right here is on that straight line. And it helps me to sew a nice 90. Okay. Now, here comes the challenge. And this is why it's easier to do this with a print than a solid. So it's face down, right? I take the far end and just fold it over once on itself. Here's the fold with my thumb. Fold it over once on itself. So now it's right side up. And then I grab another strip. If you have a solid, it's really easy to get that mixed up. <laughs> it's really easy to get that mixed up. Again, I'm just making sure I've got a little bit of color. You know, and it's and it has a fairly straight, it's fairly straight. I'm going the wrong way. Time to take notes. Yeah, time to take notes. Turn this, put that needle right in the V right up there. And then this other V, I'm just going to swing it over to the red line. And watch the red line as I stitch. I need seven strips. Okay. So it, it's upside down now. I'm going to put my thumb in it. One fold and flip it over onto itself one time, and now it's right side up. I did not look to see if, was binding included in that uh, Happy Halloween quilt kit? I don't remember. I need to look, because I thought about doing a black binding on it. It's really easy to get these twisted around. So, you know, more than once. And then you're like, what happened? <laughs> Why did that happen? Face down, face together. There we go. Right sides together. Okay. I got two more strips to go here. This is going to be so pretty. I thought... It may be today. We'll have to see. Hey, Valerie, somebody wrote on my fabric. <laughs> I hope, I don't think, that, I hope that's not an ink pen. It might be, but you won't see it. Okay. I want to thank you guys for supporting Fiberworks with uh, the American Pie. She told me that um, Sandra, one of the owners told me that um, she sold so many of those kits to you guys. So thank you very much. I don't make a commission from them. That's just my local quilt shop. All right, that's it. I'm done. So now that I've got all these, all I do is take my shears and I will just snip. Now, a lot of, if I have a whole bunch, I will take it over to cutting table and do this with a rotary cutter. So I've cut my quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. Now I still have a bunch left too that I got to put in my stash. So that's good. And yeah, I'm throwing away the Selva Jens. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about dog beds or none of that. Our local shelters won't take any, they won't take quilts. Dogs, anxious dogs will get into them and eat them and get stuff stuck in their stomachs and intestines. So they'll take a blanket, but they won't take a quilt. Nothing stuffed. But some of you get crazy with the scraps, and I appreciate that. But I don't have bandwidth for that in my life. 
I'm going to send Valerie out of here with my scrap basket on Sunday when she goes back to Fiberworks because they sell them by the pound. So that's handy. And that way I know my scraps are going to quilters. But nobody wants these. There's nothing for this. Okay. All done. So I got my binding. See how that came out? It matches perfect. Looks great. Good enough for government work, right? Yep. Nope. You go to Fiberworks when you visit family. Oh, that's nice, Cindy. Yeah. They're a great little quilt store. There's so much inspiration in there. Lynn Pratt, I, I highlighted her on my uh, channel a while ago. She's a pattern creator, and she does a lot of the patterns and the quilts that are hanging in there, all the panels. You know, she's really good with panels. Yeah, you save those pieces for applique. Hmm? I have a load of saved pieces for applique. You know, yesterday when I was making Mr. Pumpkinhead, I cut that orange fabric for one of those face pieces uh, wrong. I, I got it right the third time. So there's plenty of fabric in there if you have boo-boos, <laughs> like me. <laughs> well, the first time I made him, I forgot to, uh, I forgot to mirror the pieces, but he was a test piece. See? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Have a good day at work, Linda. So let me show you Mr. Pumpkinhead. How about that? Look at that. Didn't he come out amazing? I love, love, love. Very happy with this. He turned out so cute. What do you got? Oh, here's the love of my life. Here he comes wearing his buckies. Don't make fun of my buckies. <laughs> he's wearing his buckies. <laughs> House pants. So he's restocked the store with the seam rippers, the seam ripper stiletto combos. So we've got all different colors. Yep. There we go. Whoop, they're rolling around. Pink and the black and orange cat's eye, purple swirl, lime green. You sold one of these this morning. The aqua blue, lime green, and blue swirl. That's the aqua. That's what aqua blue. That's sapphire blue. Copper, blue swirl. Look at that one. That's very cool. I don't know. And then red swirls and rose red. Very pretty stuff. So they, let the me side. see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So what they are, okay, is they're really nice. He handcrafts all of these himself out in the shop. So it has, these are on powertoolswiththreadstore.com. Okay. So it has a seam ripper end in it and you just pop it in there and then you can use it just like that. I showed y'all yesterday. And then the other end is a stiletto. And I use the stiletto when I bind to shove things underneath the foot. But it's really nice. They're very hefty. Don't let it fall on your foot. You'll put a hole in your foot. But these are great. So love these. Very, very good. Best in the industry. Yep. They are, uh, we call them Keith Rippers. But he's, he used to spin pens. And uh, yes, we will have seam rippers on the cruise. Sure will. And Harriet, that way you don't have to pay shipping. How nice is that? Or tax if you're in Texas. Yep. Yeah, you guys, a lot of you have them, I know. You used your stiletto yesterday. Good. Yeah, so I'm getting emails. When can I buy another? I need to get a stiletto seam ripper. When can I get it? <laughs> and he's charging 25 I saw at Houston Quilt Festival last year, they're charging between $27.50 and $29 for those. So they're going up. Yeah. So thank you all so much. He reads the comments in the chat. So uh, I appreciate all of the accolades. You got yours on sew and sale 13? Yeah. You want it in purple? Well, Bernadette, let me tell you, but you've got to get it because they're, they go just gone. It's crazy. Uh, question, why is there heat and bond interfacing in my Amazon store by the bolt instead of heat and bond like you used to have? Terry, they don't have it in little packages. I don't know why. Oh, I buy mine by the bolt. So I only put in my Amazon store stuff that I buy. I don't buy it in the little package because that's not, that's not financially prudent for me. They charge more for a smaller piece for convenience, right? I buy it by the bolt. I buy it by the two bolts. So when I run out of my first bolt 
and start into my second, I order another bolt because I go through heat and bond light, like nobody's business. So, oh, it says the Keith Rippers are sold out. That can't, that can't be right. He said he put them on the store site. Well, let me go tell him. Hold on. I can hear him talking to the dog. Hey, Thompson, the store site says they're sold out. Would you go check your buttons? Would you? Okay. He's like, no, they're there. So you just bought one. So they're there. Not every color is there. If you, if you want a different color that's not there, check the different colors. Okay. You guys are ordering them up. No, they're, they're not gone, Tina. They're not gone. Not all of those. He's going to bring about 20 of them on the cruise. I'm so excited about that cruise. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited about it. Julie and I, Juju, were FaceTiming and we're dressing up for the 20s night and the boys are dressing up too. Well, she's working on her husband, Dave. <laughs> Pink says they're sold out. That's entirely possible. Yes. Oh, the necklaces. Yeah. Um, What color do you want, Peggy? I'll have him make you one. He has some necklace kits. Just tell me what color. Yeah, <laughs> Patty. We do. We call these, well, we were in the military. So here's the thing. He's got a little bit of hearing loss. And so he doesn't hear higher registers. So when I say Keith, that E, that high pitched E, he doesn't, he doesn't get it. He doesn't hear me. So when I yell Thompson, he gets it. You know, if I, that's the only way. Sorry, sorry on the purple. Bernadette, I'm telling you. 101 is a stabilizer, heat and bonds and adhesive. Yes. That's right. Hey, Lisa, how's your finger? Betty Boop tried to take her finger off with her rotary cutter on Sunday. Yeah, y'all, they're wonderful gifts for guilds. You know, if you have a president that's leaving or you got a, a sewing bestie and it's her birthday or something like that. Yeah. Can I? Yeah, El Faber, you want to come in my suitcase? Sure. Are you? <laughs> We're going to have a ball. The purple sold out. I'm telling you, you guys, you got to be quick around this bunch. Bunny quick. So if it's sold out, on the page for the purple ripper, there's a black box under there that says notify me when available. And you click that and you put your email in there and you will get an email when more purples are loaded on the site. And when you get that email, you need to get that thing right away because everybody who wants a purple one is getting that email. Okay. So yeah, the pink and the purple and the blue swirl are the most popular. So, okay. Y'all got to be quick around here. This bunch, y'all know what women are like in a fabric store. <laughs> oh, Deborah said, yeah, patience, your perseverance pays off. She tried more times than she can remember, but she finally got a purple one. <laughs> Eli F., I got your email this morning, and I want to tell you how much that meant to me. Thank you so much. That was so incredibly thoughtful of you. So, um, I, you know, it's emails like that that make this all worthwhile. So uh, very, very nicely written and full of grace. So thank you. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. I don't let my grandchildren use the rotary cutter yet. Uh, the window here, this window here wants a purple seam ripper. <laughs> okay. I gotta, I gotta iron my binding. I'm not getting anything done sitting here visiting with you. Oh, you're a sweetheart, Eli. Okay. I've got, pardon me. I, what are you doing, Frida? You coming in here looking for a treat again? I've got a, I got my hoop. 
this is what I was working on when I went up to Cibolo Valley Guild last Thursday. I was showing them snap okay and that's a uh, on wander lane and uh i didn't um put the order right when i made the design and it actually stitched the veins underneath but that's okay i put a heart on top of it for the leaf and i'll stitch them again but i got it on here so it was cool they got to watch me cut out the fabric and stitch part of it down they only gave me 45 minutes so that was a challenge but i made it let me roll you guys over here. Maybe bring you up so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. What am I doing? I have to roll this thing. I got a handle on here. And I got a hold on. I don't want to drop you because it'll go zing, bang, right down to the bottom. There we go. And make sure we're still on. Everything's good. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to use this Quilted Hearts thing this thing is so cool you guys so it's i showed it the other day but i'll show you me using it now okay so you find the end of your binding and you fold i fold it in half wrong sides together about the first i don't know eight to ten inches okay all right Um, I, I have a, hold on a minute. I need my binding bucket. Oh, no crap. Oh, that's dusty. I need a piece of, so let me see here. Will this work? Oh, a little piece of batting i don't know just to get the dust out this is just for just for binding so i put this off the table to catch the binding okay and then i put this under here if you do this on a Bias, you'll stretch it, so I don't recommend it for bias. Okay. And then how this works. So, right? So then you fold this part of it back here, and then you pull. And there's some magic that happens on the silicone. You just get this lined up. It's a little hard on mine because I got all these cords. But... It just, you get the most perfect crease. You just do a little at a time, making sure my little tail is uh, aiming for the bucket. Okay. And this is a really quick and easy way. It's nice if you, you know, you don't have a lot of space too. I love gizmos, y'all. I'm a gizmo girl. So you just line it up. I'm not looking at the comments, so I can't see what you guys are talking about. So if you're asking me a question, whoop. I don't have a link to this. Um, I've seen them on Etsy and I've seen them in quilt stores. So, and I don't like to give my link to an Etsy shop because Etsy considers that an external link and takes an extra amount of percentage away from the vendor. And uh, I don't like that. I, that's one of the reasons I left Etsy and I went to Shopify for my platform on our store site was because you cannot opt out of that external link program. And uh, if I put an affiliate link on there, you know, the poor vendor is getting even less than they were getting because Etsy takes like, 
it's it's upwards of 30 percent it's a lot that etsy takes from the vendors and since you can't opt out of that i opted not to do that and uh, went to the expense of switching over to Shopify for our store site. They're out of Canada. Okay. See how quick and easy this is? It's going into my bucket down there. I got a bucket of binding. See that? <laughs> Nope, that was not heat erasable ink. That's okay, you can't see it. I'm so excited to get American Pie off the long arm. I had a couple of issues with the uh, batting, some bubbles, but I used a new batting and um, I used a, a hemp bamboo blend and I don't know if I will use that again in large projects. I mean, I'm sure it's fine, but it, it just seemed to shift around on me more than, um, than the cotton. The cotton just wanted to stick. And uh, I, I had trouble with it. So to the point that I needed to um, get in there and cut a slice in the batting to let it lay down a little bit. So I, I wasn't real happy about that. I didn't have to unpick anything, thank goodness. Okay. Done. Awesome. Whoop, I got strings. Okay. Oh, binding's ready. Put that in the trash. All right. Oh, I got limited space here. I was going to get some casters for my long arm here so I can move it out of the way when I needed to. Keith says no because it'll roll all over the place. Let me move you up here a little bit and then get you back down here by me. What's Keith? Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Keith asking you what color you want. He likes to he likes to pop in here. What color showed sold out? I think it was the pink and the purple are showing sold out. Both of those, pink and purple, Keith. That's what I've seen in the chat. He is bossy. <laughs> oh. I want to show you uh, this weekend. Yes, I see Bernadette. He asked what colors are out of stock. I, I scrolled back up and saw. Y'all, he, he'll he be out there in the shop in a little bit making more of them. I know he's got more blanks. What's a good batting content for the Happy Halloween quilt? I'm using 100% cotton, Linda. 100% cotton batting. And that gave me a nice, uh, let me see. That's giving me a nice loft. So the quilting shows up real nice. Okay. I really like it. I'm just using a, now I get my batting from uh, loft supply. They're out of the woodlands, a husband and wife couple, and they buy their batting from a company in Fort Worth. So it's all American made stuff. Nothing coming from overseas and very clean cotton batting. I have not found bowls. I haven't found bald spots or anything. So um, loft supply, USA made. Yes, I know David and his wife, Sherry, and very nice people. Um, 
He says they went fast back to the shop. <laughs> you guys keep him hopping. I love that. Um, so, and this is, you know, he was on the 100% as well. Okay, 100% cotton. That's what it looks like all quilted down. Also, if you guys are getting ahead on this, I am cutting a half inch seam allowance. And I am making my basting box one eighth inch larger than block size. So finished block is nine by 11. And if you're new and like, what is she talking about? We're doing a embroider along starting in May for the happy Halloween quilt from Amy Bradley designs. I got a link below for 10% off any of their patterns. If you want to follow along, but, or you can source your own fabrics. That's fine too. But we're making it snap like method, or you can do it the old fashioned way. If you don't have a scan and cut or want to do all that fancy stuff. Some people are putting, um, did I stitch join my batting first before the background embroidery? No, I did not. So, um, what were, what was I thinking about? I had a thought and it just went think. Um, yeah. So the finish block is nine by 11 on the monsters. So I made the basting box nine and an eighth by 11 and an eighth. Okay. And I cut, see how nice and clean cut that is. That's from the trimmer by George. I've got a link to that below as well. Trimmer by George cleaned up. You just run the trimmer by George along. You fold your, you fold your pretty fabric over and you run the trimmer by George along it and it trims off the batting and the stabilizer all at once, leaving just the pretty fabric. And then you flip the ruler over and you can trim your seam allowance to whatever you want. I trim mine to half an inch because when I stitch and put these together, I'm going to use that outer line. See that outer basting box line? I'm going to stitch just inside of that so you won't see it in the seam allowance. And that takes care of that one eighth inch extra. I talked to Julie from Designs by Juju and she recommended this is the way to do this so that when you put these blocks together and you sew them all together, that's exactly how she does all of her uh, in the hoop projects. Okay. Thank you, L Faber. Julie did do a good job on the background quilting. So very nice. Can I show how to do the basting box or is it in May's videos? It is in May's videos, but Sandra, um, I'm using in brilliance. And in the utility menu in Brilliance, it says base design. And you click that and it'll zip in a basting box right away and put it all around your design. And then I click on the basting box in the objects panel and resize it to what I need. And then I import the, this is four of the six by 10 designs. One, two, three, four. Okay. And I put them where they needed to go. And then I saved the basting box and the background quilting as a PES final embroidery file. You can do it in any home embroidery machine format. I saved it as a file and then I import that. It's, so it's got the basting box and the background quilting all in one right from the get go. So. Oh, you're in Thailand. Hello. Welcome from the other side of the planet. My dad was stationed in Thailand. Ubon, Bangkok, a couple of places. Very nice. Let me show you, uh, April's asking, within brilliance, is it possible to reduce the Halloween design so you can make a table runner or a wall hanging? Absolutely. Although, Peggy, you're going to want to reduce the design in canvas. Okay. Reduce the design in canvas first so that your cut pieces are the right size. So then you save that one to the scan and cut and one down to your computer for brilliance. So if you're going to do any reduction in sizes, it always has to be 
long before the embroidery design is ever created, before you do, uh, before you do that. So when you save the entire design, if you have a smaller hoop, how will that work? So you would have to look at like, so I stitched him in a nine by 14. And now we'll get into that print and stick target paper again. What you do is you create separate hoopings for a smaller hoop. Let's say you have a six by 10. I don't recommend doing this in a five by seven. You'll be, it, it'll be hard. You'll be doing most of it in on the domestic sewing machine. But if you have a six by 10, okay, you can hoop. So you create the master design and in brilliance. And then you just grab those pieces that are going to fit into a sing, into multiple hoopings. So I would hoop if I had a six by 10, I would do the shirt, the bow tie and the neck as one hooping. And that's pieces one, two and eight. So I would grab these and put them on another tab and in brilliance, center it in the hoop, right? Print it out. And that's your first hooping. Then this is going to be too wide for the six by 10. So you would need to do <clears throat> these two pieces in a hooping and these two pieces in a hooping. Then you can probably get the eyes and the stem as one and the mouth in another. It's just going to require multiple hoopings. Now, Julie did digitize this background quilting for the six by 10 hoops so that you can have that. But there are, um, the border designs couldn't, I don't know if there are six by 10 in those or not. Oh my goodness, Tammy, thank you so much. That is so generous of you, thank you. You're so thoughtful, I appreciate that. So let me show you how to get all of this going if you want to do this. I'm gonna share my screen, let me pull up um, my blog to get you started. Um, where is my blog? It's under quilting and my favorites. Duh. That's where it is. Okay. To get you started. If you import two separate designs, quilting and applique, is it possible, whoop, possible to hide hidden stitches, the quilting in essentials as a merged design? Uh, Yes. Yes, it will. Absolutely. So, yes, because the remove hidden stitches button is in essentials. Yeah, that's in essentials. So what she's talking about is if you created, let's say you don't have stitch artist, right? And you created the background quilting, you did all four of them and you put them together. Now in Stitch Artist, what happens is, as soon as you get this all done, it creates automatically like a mask. So there is no background quilting behind Mr. Pumpkinhead here. The, the machine didn't do it. Okay. So if you have essentials, then what you would do is go ahead and create your background quilting and that's one hooping. Okay. One design. And you save that as a, let's use brother. I'm going to say PES. You save that as a PES file. Okay. Then you put together Mr. Pumpkin head and you save him as a PES file. Then you copy all of Mr. Then you take the PES file, copy, paste. Okay. And essentials will remove the hidden stitches of the background quilting behind them. That's what I'm talking about with number Stitch Artist 2. If you have Stitch Artist 2 and you cannot get those background stitches removed, and we're talking about final blanket stitches in this case, but if you can't get those hidden stitches removed, then what you want to do is take that lower piece and turn it into its own embroidery design. Save it as a PES file and then bring it into the other one, put it behind in the stitch order and remove hidden stitches and that will work, okay? So you're smart enough to get this done, Susan. We don't need talk like that. 
I'll get you through it, my friend. You'll be fine. So let me go up here to my blog. I've got, I'm going to have to present. Can I explain how to trace the pattern with heat and bond without using a scan and cut? Okay. So, Janie, what you do, it's you're going to do it just the old fashioned way. Yeah, you're going to do that the old fashioned way. So, you'll take your heat and bond and put it face down, paper side up over the pattern and trace it with a pencil or whatever. Okay. That's the only way to do that is the old fashioned way. That the trick is with these with in brilliance is you've got to create that vector graphic. You can't do that with a printer. It just won't work. Yeah, Tina Tremblay. Um, it's power tools with thread store.com. So <laughs> Art Jenkins says so she's gonna start. This is gonna make her start drinking. <laughs> Okay. Um, you can make your blanket stitches any size you want. I chose, um, I went large on these just because they're cartoony and I wanted them to show. It's up to you. Okay. Let me present my screen and show you guys. I'm going to have to do this a bunch of times because, all right, so here's my blog. And here's where you can get Amy Bradley designs 10% off. There's a coupon code in there. Okay. Here it is right here. So when you click on this, as you scroll down here, I showed you this the other day. Here's your pattern. The pattern's a download. Okay. You can get your fabric kit now. Um, and then you can get the background quilting designs from designs by Juju. If I click these, um, you're not going to, be able to see it. So I'm going to switch to different web pages, but for hoops larger than 12 inches, you need 15 inch wide, no show cutaway mesh. And then for smaller than 12 inches, you need 12 inch wide. All right. And I cut my background fabric an inch taller and wider. And then you need a white embroidery bobbin. I did use a black embroidery bobbin behind the happy Halloween words and uh, black thread, lots of black thread. Okay. You need purple embroidery thread. I found you guys a quartet from Dime if you want that. You need Pellon SF101 on the back of the white fabric, unless you're going to use the muslin that they sent in the kit. Okay. And then down here is a list of all the equipment that you might want or need ever in your life. So let me stop sharing that. And then I want to show you, um, we're going to go to um, Two Chicks Quilting, and we will see if they have, <laughs> if they have any more kits. And then I need another page for Designs by Juju, and I'll show you that. All right. So I'm going to share my screen again. So yes, there is still time to purchase the fabric. The kits might be out, but she told me, the chicks told me that they are working on getting more. So uh, you can call them. So here's their website, twochicksquilting.com. And you can call them and get on a waiting list and then they will let you know. So you go to Quilt Kits, okay? And then... In the kits, you scroll down one more time uh, for kits right here. And then I have a section. There's my mug right there. And you click that. And that will let you know. Aha, they've got them. So there are more in stock that you can get for this. And you're going to get plenty of fabric. So that if you make boo-boos, you're not stuck, okay? You're going to get plenty of fabric for that. Okay. Now, the background quilting. So you can use that link on 
my video on my blog and it'll jump you over there. That's the easiest way to do that. Um, Avi, she wants to know how many people are making the Halloween quilt with me. Two chicks has sold 250 kits. So, and then there are plenty more who have, um, that are sourcing their own fabrics. So I bet you were around 300, 350, I would think. Yeah, they should, they'll ship today, this week for sure. Cause they shipped out 150 kits Thursday and Friday, and they were shipping the rest of them yesterday and today. Okay. And then to get the background quilting, let me share my screen. Miss, You need stabilizer and batting. It depends on your batting. If you're not using battleizer, Allison, then I use stabilizer. And I'll tell you why in a second. Let me get back to the um, Design Space Juju and share their site. So you can click on these three bars right over here. And in the search, type in Snaplique with two Ps and go to search. And here it is. This is the background quilting, okay? So you can just add to cart. It's an instant download. And these are the quilting designs you're gonna get. So there is that scribble block. And there's your cornerstone. Here's your background quilting. There's the sashing. Now this is 4.3 by 5.3 so that they will fit in an eight by 10 hoop. Okay. But you can size them down. Okay. And then here are your borders and that's what you'll get. So this is your two by nine sashing piece right here. And then below that is your two by 11 sashing piece. And then there's your two by two cornerstone. Okay. So you guys can make this work. Absolutely can make it work. It is a wall hanging. The quilt is a wall hanging. It's not a cuddle quilt. It's a wall hanging. So the reason I'm using stabilizer. Oh, oh, we're, after, we're over eight o'clock, you guys. The reason I'm using stabilizer in addition to my batting is because. Um, my batting has that scrim on the bottom, those little pimples, right? The bumps. I don't want that getting pushed down into my embroidery machine. Those can come, you know, they can beard. If you use a, if you're on a long arm and you use the batting upside down with the pimples on the top and you get bearding, which is where the batting is being pulled up through the holes, that can be a part of the reason that that could happen is because you have your batting on upside down. So if you think of them like pimples, you don't want your pimples to show. So you always put your batting pimple side down. Well, I don't want bearding in the embroidery either, but as the needle goes down into the bobbin case, I don't want it down in there either. So I use stabilizer and that keeps everything nice and clean. Okay. Yeah. Time flies when we're having fun, huh? So good morning, Patty. Um, the total number of layers, this is it for me, you guys. I probably will not be putting a layer of batting in between. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, I might, I don't know. I don't know. And if you are getting ahead and you're making these blocks, software does strange things. And so you might get some crazy long jump stitches. I know I did yesterday here before you go any further after those cre are created, um, get in there and clip those out and clean that up. That's just very helpful. It is no show mesh. Yes, it is no show mesh. It's what I always use on these kinds of in the hoop projects. No show mesh. It's very soft. It doesn't change the hand of the block. See, it's still real nice and floppy. It's nice and floppy. So it's still a soft quilt. Okay. Well, hi, Bonnie. I hope you're enjoying Mississippi or uh, not Mississippi. Yeah. You guys were over there by Mississippi, weren't you? Louisiana. So, all righty. Um, okay, you guys. Our hour is more than up. I heard um, Frito gets fed at breakfast at eight o'clock and I heard Keith putting it in her bowl. 
So uh, what is Battleizer? Linda, Battleizer is a batting and a stabilizer in one, and it is proprietary to Hoop Sisters. And it's a little bit more expensive, but you don't have to hoop a uh, stabilizer at all. So you just lay a piece of batting on, but you don't have that scrim on the bottom. It's nice and smooth. That's a very high quality batting. So a lot of people uh, have, um, oh, prayers for your daughter, Kathy. Okay. You ordered the fabric, Sally. Yay. That's good. That's good. Okay. But before you do this, before you make any of these pretty fabric blocks, you guys start small, start simple, uh, put a piece of scrap fabric on your mat. Okay. And go into shapes or letters and just cut something, cut something, right? Doesn't matter what. And then import that into Embrilliance and start playing with adding stitches and use your scrap basket and start small. You can do this. Okay. I've got a load of videos on how to do this. And on my blog post, if you go down to the bottom, there's a video on how I did it with Lori Holt, simple shapes. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, just, I'm just looking at the chat. All right, you guys. Time to go. I will see y'all tomorrow. Thank you so much for starting your day with me and helping me get my binding started. I'm going to put it on the long arm now. So I'll talk to you later. You guys go sew something. Bye.